You think building the cloud is complex? Let me show you how just in a few minutes you will be able to deploy cloud function on your own. Hi, I'm Ilya Krustelov, a certified professional cloud architect with over 20 years of experience in software development and system design. In this video, I will guide you through the process of creating a simple Telegram bot using Python which will then deploy to Google Cloud function. This ensures your bot is available 24-7. While the tools we are going to use fall under Google Cloud Platform's free tier, you will still need to set up a billing account. Don't worry though, we'll be careful to use only services covered by the free tier, so keep your credit card handy just for account setup. Before we dive into the setup, let's briefly understand what Google Cloud Platform and Telegram are. Google Cloud Platform, or GCP, is a Google Cloud Services platform provided by Google. It offers a wide array of managed services, including computing power, storage options, and application development environments. The scalability of GCP services means they can grow with your needs, ensuring you only pay for what you use as your demands increase. Telegram is a popular instant messaging app, much like WhatsApp but with distinct advantages for developers. It offers a robust and free API that you can use for creating automated chat applications, known as Telegram bots. These bots can interact with users through multimedia interfaces, handling text, audio, and video messages, which makes them incredibly useful. First, we need to set up a Google Cloud environment. Begin with visiting cloud.google.com, click the console, and here we need to start by creating a new project. It allows us to manage our resources easily and we can delete them if we decide to clean up. I will put a my first bot as a name. Okay, create. And let's just wait a few seconds. Next, as I mentioned, we need to set up a billing account. In order to do that, we need to access sidebar billing. And here you can create a billing account. You just need to follow on-screen instructions to add your credit card. Now we are ready to utilize one of the Google Cloud's feature I really like, the ability to launch a code editor directly in the browser. So we click Activate Cloud Shell, and then we click Open Editor. I have prepared some boilerplate for this demo, so all you need to do is just click on this long Git repository and paste the link that I will provide in the comment section under the video. Once you click it and choose the home directory, the system will download code to your environment. Let's take a moment to walk through the code we just cloned. As you can see, it's a simple Python application about 50 lines long. Now, if you open requirements.txt file, you can see there are two libraries that are in use. One is Python Telegram bot, which is a popular client for Telegram API. Another one is Functions Framework, which is provided by Google Team and it's simplified development of cloud functions. Now let me show you main parts of the code. The first function you can see here is Telegram bot. This function is important because it's entry point to our cloud function. Remember the name of this function as we will need to specify it when deploying our bot. The function itself doesn't do much. It just take a request and pass it to the main function and wrap the call into asyncio.run call. If you are not familiar with Python async API, here's a quick tip. Asynchronous functions must be executed in an event loop, which is exactly what asyncio.run sets up for us. The main function is where things get interesting. Here's what happens in four key steps. First, we initialize a Telegram bot with the token that is taken from environment variable. Next, we register handlers. These are functions that are designed to respond to specific updates. For example, this is handler for star command and this is handler for text messages. Next, if request has no data, we register cloud function as a webhook, so Telegram know where to send updates. Finally, we read the update and pass it to the application. Now about the handlers I mentioned. The on start handler is triggered when user send start command, and we just respond with this text. The on message handler is triggered by any text message from user, and it just sent the user message back. You might be wondering, where do I get Telegram bot token? We need to register a Telegram bot to obtain this token. So let's dive into that. First, head over to telegram.org to download and install Telegram app if you haven't already. Once installed, create an account using your phone number. Now with your Telegram account set up, we are ready to dive into creating our bot. The process begins simply by interacting with Botfather, a special bot designed to help you to create and manage your Telegram bots. You just need to find a bot father in search, click here, start, and here you just need to choose new bot. Now you need to provide a name for your bot, I will call mine GCP bot, and you also need to provide the username. 
Just keep in mind that username of your bot should end this bot and should be unique across all of Telegram. Let me choose some random name. If everything will go fine, you will see the message from Botfather, which contains this API token. If you click on it, it will be copied to your clipboard, so you can use it in your code later. Now let's update our code by inserting the token we just obtained. However, I must caution you, it's generally unsafe to hardcode your sensitive information like API tokens directly into your code. Ideally, you should use secure storage such as Google Cloud's Storage Manager or third-party services like Doppler or Vault. For this demonstration, to keep things simple, we'll skip that step. But remember, in a production environment, always secure your tokens. Now let's deploy our function to Google Cloud. This ID comes with very handy Cloud Code plugin, which simplifies the deployment process. First, activate the Cloud Code plugin. Then we go to Cloud Functions. The system will prompt you to authorize API calls to GCP on your behalf. Just authorize it. Next, we just need to wait for a few moments. Then we need to click on Deploy Function. Choose the project. Next, in order to build and run our function, we need to enable a bunch of APIs. Fortunately for us, in this IDE, we can easily do it by clicking Enable API. After that, we just need to wait a few moments. Choose the region where you want your function to reside. I'm choosing Europe West 1. Here we need to specify the name of our function. I recommend using the same name as your endpoint. So I'm using Telegram bot. For this tutorial, we'll use Gene 1 type of function as it's simpler to configure and deploy. The system prompts us to provide an entry point which must match the decorated function from our code. So we need to provide a Telegram bot here. As a runtime, please use Python 3.12. This ensures compatibility and avoid any discrepancies. All that's left now is to wait for the function to be deployed. This might take a few minutes. Great, now let's check our Cloud function in Google Cloud Console. After navigating to the details of the function, we need to choose Trigger tab. Here we'll find the URL by which this function will be triggered. Let's try opening this link in the browser. Oops, a forbidden error appears, indicating that we are not allowed to call this function. However, since we need Telegram to be able to call our function, we need to adjust settings. To fix this, we need to head over back to Google Cloud. Here we need the permissions tab. Here we need to grant Cloud Functions and Walker role to all users. So let's do it. We click Grant Access, choose All Users, and choose the role Cloud Functions Invoker. Click Save, hit Allow Public Access. Sometimes GCP might need a little extra time to finish updating the configuration. Let's check our function again. This time you should see the message webhook set indicating that our Cloud function registered itself with Telegram as a destination for bot updates. Now let's head back to the Telegram to interact with bot we created earlier. You can find your bot by searching by its username or by clicking the link provided by Botfather in its last message. I can't remember the username of my bot, so I just click this link. Then I click the Start button to initiate a conversation. And here you should immediately receive the response from your code. Now let's try to type any other message to see how it works. This simple interaction helps verify that both the start and message handlers in our bot are working as expected. Building a bot like this might seem straightforward, so what's the point of Telegram bot that only echoes messages back? But what if it could do something more, something smarter, like an intelligent assistant? Well, guess what? This is exactly what we're going to explore in this video. I can't wait to show you how, so make sure to join me. See you there.